everybody. Welcome to another live tasting coming to you. Holy crap, I just spilled whiskey all over my computer. Hopefully that doesn't shorten it out, but welcome to the live tasting. Tonight, what we have, we have a showdown between what won my American Rye Whiskey of the Year against some stellar craft rise now one of these ryes i have not had before it's completely new to me but i am excited to see what it is all about now as we come together once more we come together in this in this community of whiskey i think it's important to note chat it up let's have some fun tonight let's let, let's take a minute away from all the stuff that we're dealing with and let's just chat have a whiskey and um i'm going to be analyzing stuff you all can be doing whatever you want and hit that subscribe button while you're at it because i've got new stuff coming out every single day tomorrow i don't think i'm going to be able to pull off a live tasting however i'm going to have something that will be available to view at nine o'clock sharp so you'll be able to watch your nine o'clock, uh, you know, Fred tasting is normal, but um, I don't think I'll be able to do it live. That may change pending schedule. Now, what we have taste to taste tonight in the might upset Thomas handy category is peerless rye. Now, when I was with Whiskey Advocate, this was one of our top rated rye of uh i think it was 2017 and it was the highest ranked craft whiskey that we had so this could be this could be one that could potentially upset thomas handy also we have catoctin creek out of virginia now this is 100 percent rye it is bottled and bond so it's got a little age to it it's at least four years old and I've always liked Catoctin Creek. I've always liked it. It's always had some of these, uh, you know, unique uh, unique notes that really appeal to me. And, like, it's got a little funk. I like me some funk. And then we have Taha. You know, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Ta. And what a beautiful bottle this is. Really beautiful bottle. Really beautiful bottle. Now, this is a malted rye. Now, malted rye, you know, like malted bark, you know, all grains can malt, even corn can malt. And that's basically, uh, you don't see a lot of malted ryes on the market, but this one is coming, coming, coming out uh, into the market now. And I am looking forward to seeing what it is all about. Now, the champion of the night the one the only uh thomas handy this is the 2019 thomas handy it's uncut it's unfiltered it's, it was distilled in the spring of 2013 it aged in warehouses k m and n it is a staggering 125.7 proof it won my best rye last year and it finished in my top 10 for best American whiskey. I have found that the reviews on this have been really, really mixed. Like I've probably been the one of the few champions of it. In fact, some of my colleagues have found it to be really untasty. So I can live with that. That happens sometimes. Sometimes I am the outlier. But what that tells me is, is that maybe I tasted it on those days that I was kind of in that right mood for that particular style of whiskey so today could be the day that i'm not in that mood and my palate could go one way or another now let's take a look at some of these questions we got coming here whoa dave tobias saying too sexy for my shirt you know i'm actually uh, i'm going to keep the shirt on today um maybe next time though maybe next time Let's see what else we got coming in. It looks like we got a lot of a uh, lot of fun. Uh, Allison uh, Whiskey Land is uh, making some uh, some laughter faces. Digging that, digging that. Uh, okay, uh, boy. 
Oh boy. Uh, Greg uh, Gorman writes, was anyone else getting nervous while he was running the ascot back and forth, worried he was about to undress? Greg, 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 Greg. Greg, 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 Greg. <laughs> Not to worry. YouTube has policies against undressing on camera. It's a thing. So I won't be able to do that. Okay, so finally, at home dad is here so I can finally start. I'm going to get to the whiskey tasting. Um, look, this is one where I am really, I'm really not sure how this is going to go. I have, I have been inundated with, with work. So my mind has not really been in tastings. It's been in some other places. And whenever that is hat, whenever that happens, I find that my palate can be distracted. So I'm going to really try and focus tonight, but I'm just coming to you right now telling you that my palate today has been very distracted with kids, with, uh, with, you know, scheduling other things. And so as I go into analytically taste these, I wonder like if that will have any kind of impact. I'll know pretty quickly if, if that's the case. Um, so let me, let me kind of jump right into it. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We are, we are streaming on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. So make sure you click the subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Okay, we're starting with Ta. Uh, I guess I could, um, I, I, this is out of Grapevine, Texas. It is a Texas rye malt whiskey. This is batch one. Ooh, that always, um, whenever you see batch one of anything, you know, you kind of think of yourself as like, you know, should I review this? You know, usually they take some, a few tries to get it figured out. So this is a, a rye malt whiskey. Let's see what it's all about. Well, it doesn't smell like rubbing alcohol or anything like that, so I'm not too concerned that I'm about to taste something that's going to kill me. Um, that's a positive. It's actually got like a chocolate and milk nose. It smells like chocolate and milk to me. Now I want a glass of chocolate milk. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh boy. Oh boy. I kind of wonder if maybe I should not have started with that one. <laughs> Woo! We're just going to say that this was their first batch, and I look forward to trying them again. But uh, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be retasting that one. So, um, so while I appreciate uh, that taste, now here's the other thing, is that they are not. Um, this is like their only rye. They they do specialize in bourbon, I think, a little bit more. So, I w I will be giving their their bourbons uh, a fair shake as well, and will not hold this rye against them in any future tastings. But, yeah, this definitely does not have a chance of um, upsetting. This doesn't have a chance of upsetting um, Handy tonight. So Handy is safe from Tom. We're just gonna go ahead and put that over there. And put that whiskey over there so we just we don't accidentally mix it up with anything else okay uh let's go to catoctin creek now this is a bottle and bond this is a bottle and bond um rye coming out of uh, virginia and i know i don't care um about i don't really care about much of the you know what you might think of like a particular brand or whatever to make it to bottle and bond as a craft distiller is an enormous accomplishment so i love this label 
I love the fact that they're going after it like they are. So Catoctin Creek, how about it? Okay, so I get like uh, some like dust particles. Um, I get like uh, kind of going into like a sawmill where they're where they are cutting oak and you know finishing wood, and you smell some lacquer in the background. And then underneath that, um, you know, it's like some cinnamon. Rye bread, a little chocolate. And like uh, fruity pebbles, like a, like a fruity fruity uh, pebbles. No. I dig, I dig. It's got a I don't think it's got a chance of winning tonight, uh, but um, I do like uh, I do like that flavor. Let's go to Peerless. Now, Peerless, something that they do that allows them to, I think, am I, you know, to stand out a little bit more, is a sweet mash. Now, sweet mash is a technique that they basically most people like sour mash, and that's when they take the back set of the distillation and add it to the uh, to the new fermentation to basically offset like any kind of uh, bacterial infestations or what have you. By sweet mashing, they have to be super, you know, hygienic, have to be very clean. And uh, by doing that, I think you get a lot more pronunciation of, of the flavor. And uh, I have always loved their rye. So this is just a standard off the shelf, small batch, uh, straight rye whiskey from Peerless, three years old. Not not a barrel pick, uh, or um, or anything like that, but you know, it's got a shot. It's got a shot just because Peerless has a little has a bit of a history with my palate. And then yeah, oh yeah, it's smelling good. It's smelling real good. Mm. Yeah. It's like it's it's like putting butter in a pan and throwing some sugar in there and letting that kind of caramelize and you can smell that, you know, coming up in your nose. It's just wonderful. Oh boy, I love that nose. Oh man. Oh ho ho ho. Oh, look at this. Peerless, peerless, peerless. Your standard rye, 109 proof, just gave me a mouthgasm. Holy shitballs. That was good. Vanilla icing just dripping right there on the tip of my palate. Rye bread, toasted rye bread. Hitting right there in the middle, and then just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cinnamon. Oh, man. Mm. I really dig this. Really dig it. Really dig it. Now, to the behemoth, to the one that I found to be such a um, such a lovely taste, and I and I picked it blind. Um, I do think that this is this was by far my favorite rye last year. However, we're in a new year. I've never done a blind tasting. I've never done a, a, a best rye. Well, I guess I have. You know what? I'm just going to retract that. I was about to say I've never done a blind tasting in a pandemic, but I have. And this isn't blind, so you know that doesn't count. So this is uh, this is Thomas Handy from the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. They are 
Thank you very much, Cleve Cunningham. It's very nice of you to say. Guys, keep those comments coming. You know, I'm doing this tasting here, but look, let's let's, let's be honest. We're a community. We're trying to we're trying to have a conversation. We can't be next to each other. We can't be. Uh, I don't live where you are, so I can't come to your lawn and sit there six feet away from you and drink some bourbon. So why don't we do it here? Let's just talk, you know, talk things out, sip a little whiskey. All right, so we had a question come in uh, before I get to this. I'm... Uh, Mike Willits asks, he's worried, he's uh, asking about uh, the flag behind me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm an Iraq vet. And when we got off the plane, that uh, that flag was waiting for me. And it was given to me by uh, a general. And uh, so the flag's very special to me. It's not the one I had with me in Iraq. I actually have a flag that was with me in Iraq. It's it's tightly sealed in a Ziploc baggie in my basement. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't display that one. But uh, that that is a, um, a flag that um, I'm very proud of. And in my office where I keep the samples, you can go check it out on Instagram. I've got the boots I wore in Iraq. So yeah, thanks for asking about the flag. I always love talking about the stars and stripes. And again, the, a reminder, this is the 2019 Thomas Handy. Okay. Caramel, caramel, caramel. This is going down that road of and now I'll have to go listen to my notes and read my notes from the last time I tasted this again this is rye this is rye and This rye is tasting like a lot of like older ryes, you know, you know, from the sixties that I've tasted, you know, they have kind of like a, a really strong black licorice note. Um, this is gotta be honest with you. It's really good. And I can break this down for you. I can break this down for you in so many different ways. Like I can tell you everything about this from a flavor perspective on the nose. It's caramel, very caramel forward on the palate. There is a, uh, there is a, there's a range of, of herbs. I want to say things like, um, oregano and caraway and, uh, dill are prominent. Then you have like a black licorice, like a black, really prominent black licorice. And if you love licorice like I do, like this can be like a, a moment that you have to have that flavor. I am more fond of red licorice than I am black licorice, but I have a, a, a deep respect and likeness for black licorice. So I am tasting a big thing of black licorice in this right now. And then after that black licorice note, I get that little bit of like ting of cinnamon on the back palate. I'm going to taste that one more time, but it's not going to be. So this is not going to be a hands down uh, winner. So after tasting that, this is not like last night where I tasted the uh, the bullets uh, blender select and was and thought it was otherworldly good in, in the moment. Uh, this is not, this is, this is a three-way race. It's a three-way. It's a three-way.
Yep. I stand confirmed. Now. So I see a lot of questions um, uh, coming coming up uh, regarding uh, who Handy is. Uh, Handy was a uh, was a man. You know they have a really good they have the story. Sazerac does a pretty good job of telling the, the the history. So you you can go to Buffalo Trace's website to learn more about him. But he was the man you know who kind of helped you know set up uh, New Orleans. Uh, to be, I mean, New Orleans was always a really prominent, you know, bar town, but, you know, he helped set that up in the, in the 1800s. And so he's kind of like revered in the, in the New Orleans bar community. Um, and they, they made a little cocktail called the Sazerac, which you may know about. So I will tell you that Thomas Handy is not exactly, he's not exactly E.H. Taylor, but. He's very significant. Okay, now that I come, I'm coming back to the Catoctin. The Catoctin's nose is um, is really warming up to me. I think I said some uh, some things like it was before. It was like going into like a like a sawmill, and you can hear that oak or smell that oak. Now there's like a really nice uh, note of vanilla. It's a really good rye. I mean, I kind of want to... Um, I really, really like this rye. And I want it... I want it to win. I want it to like... I want it like... It, it's on my palate... And it's like got all these beautiful notes. The, the that rye bread is there. I'm now picking up some some honey, and I'm wanting to to do more. It's like it's hitting all the right spots in my palate, and then it just goes away. It's like I don't know. I mean, it's almost like a it's 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 like a wide receiver who can run a four two forty, but drops every damn pass you throw to him. This is this has got like everything on it and then when it comes time to like catch the pass down down for the finish it, it falls short so i'll be knocking talking creek out of the contention um i do know for a fact that that is fantastic the barrel picks that i've had from there are otherworldly at times so I do believe that we have a situation here where that one at a hundred at a hundred proof, uh, it just might be a little light, you know. Like I think that I know Catoctin Creek's whiskey, and I think it just might be a little better out of the barrel. Okay, so now what we have here is we have a face-off between. Peerless, a three-year-old rhyme, and Thomas Handy, a six-year-old rhyme. So I think I know why people didn't like Handy. I think people didn't like Handy because they probably found that um, that licorice smell and taste to be a little too medicinal like uh, I like that and I think as long as as long as you can like call that out and note it I, I like I, I like the the nose and taste of, of handy
man. Hmm. Ah. The way that Peerless makes their whiskey, I feel like I feel like there are layers upon layers, like a wave coming in. And I just think we don't we don't realize where this where this brand is going to go. Um, and I told them, I told them from the moment I tasted their rye, I said, stop making bourbon and just focus on rye. That's how much I like their rye. That's how much I like their rye. I think they have an incredible rye whiskey making skill at that distillery for such a young distillery it's unmatched it's unmatched for for the the amount of time they've been in business it really is but handy i mean look that this has like some of those notes in there that you just you just don't really get um unless you know you get you get the right rye and like I told you all, I have a licorice tooth. I love licorice. My boy and I will go to the uh, we'll go to the theater. I'll get a pack of Twizzlers, and he'll get, you know, he'll get whatever candies he has. And then seven thousand calories later, we walk out of there. I'll have nachos and Twizzlers and popcorn. My God, I think that might be one of the positives about being isolated, is I'm not packing on that fatty, fat, fat poundage at the at the movie theater. But I do miss the movie theater. All right, guys. I think I'm ready to call this. It's actually very close. It's essentially, it's essentially the difference. These these whiskeys are night and day. These two ryes are night and day. Peerless approaches the palate. On the it tickles the tip, and then just kind of like walks back, whereas Handy just jumps right on there on the mid palate it jumps right there in the middle of the tongue and it spreads out to the two and then it kind of drops down to the jawline peerless's ability for this whiskey anyway its ability to really kind of like tease the tongue and, and like play around with it a little bit it makes it it puts it in the running but what it does not have is it does not elevate that tingling sensation that it puts on the tip of the tongue it does not elevate that to anywhere else on the palate. What happens is, is that it kind of just softly dissipates everywhere else. And so from a pure tasting perspective, from an analytical uh, situation, I have no choice but to go with what was my uh, American uh, rye whiskey of the year last year and give the... Give the um, Give tonight's win to Handy. So, Thomas uh, Thomas Handy wins tonight's uh, taste off. And now I want a big bag of Twizzlers. So, I'm probably going to gain a little weight tonight. Let's go to the questions. Let's see what is going on up in here. Um, doo -doo -doo. All right, let's see what kind of questions we have. Dave Tobias says, Peerless has a great distillery tours. At least they used to. Now, you can go to uh, the YouTube channel and check out the um, uh, Q&A I did with Caleb where he was showing me around the distillery and uh, talking about how they're doing. Now, they are still in operation. They're still making whiskey. So uh, it'll be interesting to see like how how things turn out for them in the, in the middle of this pandemic. Uh, Steve Richards asks, any experience with Abraham Bowman rye? 
Private Barrel from 2011 compared to Thomas Handy. Um, you know, I did have some Bowman Rye. I, I cannot say that uh, I have any left to do a comparison. Um, and let's be honest, you know, 2011, if I had the bottle in 2011, it's guaranteed to be gone. I'm not one of these guys who has uh, a bunch of unopened bottles. <laughs> My wife and I, we drink the whiskey or we drink it with friends. But um, I don't have a lot of unopened bottles. But Steve, if you would like to send me samples of your 2011 uh, Bowman and Handy, I'd be happy to taste them. Uh, Jeff Grayson asked on Twitter, thoughts on Peerless Rye uh, single barrel versus uh, barrel proof? Um, I'm almost always going to go down the road of barrel proof with Peerless. I think their stuff is really good out of the barrel, so that's a pretty easy win for me. Kyle Ladd asks, what whistle pig should I be looking for, if any? All right, so I am generally not an... Um, I'm generally not the biggest fan of Whistle Pig, but there was one product that came out a few years ago called uh, Black Prince, and I thought it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Now, it was priced pretty expensive. I mean, I think it was like three, $400. Um, and yes, I would pay that money for it. I thought it was so good. So I would be on the lookout for that if you can find it. I was uh, quite the fan. Uh, Brandon Watson asks, what do I think of Lot 40? Listen, Lot 40 is a great Canadian whiskey. Lovely rise coming out of there. Uh, I would drink it all day long now. I don't get a lot of it, but that doesn't mean I would if I was thinking about it in the moment. It's really, really good whiskey. Alan C. asks, thanks for joining, Alan. Do any rise tend to have a longer finish than bourbon? Any reason why? Um, you know, I don't think that's inherently true. I think what you have to do is you have to analyze how the rise hits your tongue. In fact, the bourbons that I tasted last night had far longer finishes, far longer finishes uh, than the rye I just tasted. Um, so... Yeah, I, I I don't think so. I don't think they do. I don't think they have longer finishes on on like a generalization. But with that said, um, that may change. I mean, you have to look at what Dad's Hat is doing, Peerless, what Peerless is doing. Um, there's a lot of people doing some phenomenal rye whiskey making right now. For about the same price, Old Forester Rye or Rittenhouse Bottled and Bond. All day long, Old Forester Rye. In fact, um, I did not put Old Forester Rye in here up against up against um, Thomas Handy. Old Forester Rye won the tasting for me the other day with uh, Elijah Craig. And if enough people said, um, go taste it and compare it to Handy, I just may do that. I may just do that, but you gotta you gotta all chime in, or I'm not gonna stand up and go get the bottle in the other room. It's just it's just too much work. <laughs> um, T.J. Gordon asks, "Handy versus Boss Hog? Look, Boss Hog tends to throw on a bunch of uh, finishes and what have you, and like I said, I'm generally not a fan of." Uh, of whistle pig there have been a lot of um a lot of them that i like uh but when it comes to the greatest whistle pig of all time in my opinion is is the black prince uh handy versus boss hog i think i think handy wins that all day long i really do uh jonah rudman i hope i said that right in your mind where does WFE, um, help me out here. What is WFE? I'm, um, are you, are you talking about Willett family estate? 
fall in the spectrum of best rise. If you're talking about uh, Willett Family Estate, I've had a 25-year-old, um, I think a 15-year-old, um, that just were mind-blowing. And then I've had some that were duds. So, you know, I, I think that what they are distilling at uh, Willett, uh, that that rye has a really prominent, um, has a real prominent peanut butter note. And when I want to taste peanut butter, I pick up um, those Willet ryes. Okay. All right, everybody. I'm going to go, I'm going to go grab the old Forester. Looks like we've had enough people here. Um, Andrew Clark says the best. Um, old Forester Rye versus Handy. So I'll leave you guys with some, some tunes here. I'm going to go get some Handy. <laughs> I mean, old po. All right, I am still looking. I know it's in there. Um, so don't give up on me just yet. I will find the old faux rye. I'm gonna add some new riff rye in there too, just to see, uh, you know, let's just see. T E M V D E D T M T. I was tempted.
All right. Farewell found it. and goodbye. Okay, so now I have to create a new graphic here on the fly. Uh, did not see this coming, folks. Not going to lie to you. I was um, I was ready to go to bed, you know, call it a night. But um, here we are in Thomas Handy versus New Riff and Old Forester. Right. Okay. Got that there. So here we go. Round two. Round two. Almost out of the of the old Forester Rye. Now this is for fun, folks. This is for fun. Entertainment purposes only. Should not consider this as any kind of like evaluation of any type. Because I've tasted these many times. I can tell you which one I'm buying out of these because I have done it. And that is the Old Forester Rye. I continue to buy it as much as I can. So you guys know my palate now. You know what I've been tasting here. Son of a bitch. That Old Forester Rye is so freaking good. Damn. Toffee. Mmm. Buttermilk biscuits. But, I mean, I love this whiskey. I really do. But I don't think it has the finish to hold up to handy. New Riff, on the other hand. I just grabbed New Riff because it was there, and I was thinking, like, I'm probably going to have to find a replacement bottle because I couldn't find the old Forester. My office is an absolute wreck right now. Mm. You know what? I got to I got to give it to Steve here. Steve uh who's obviously been watching through the whole show says a tough tough day at work uh turns into a um, <laughs> it turns into a good night of rise. I, I, I love that, you know, and I, you know, I, I really, I, I really do mean to tell you that you all are helping me get through all this too. You know, we are a community. I believe that from the bottom of my heart and, you know, this whole thing is not easy on any of us, but I refuse to let it win. I refuse to let anything tell me that I can't hang out with friends and smoke a cigar or sip some whiskey or have a conversation. And I know this is one tiny, tiny little thing in, a, in, in the grander uh, scheme of trying to make people enjoy their time right now. But if I can bring just a little bit of goodwill, a little bit of, of, of fun to your household, to, to your palate, man, you've made my day. You've made my day. Okay, this bottle and bond, or this uh, new riff bottle and bond, though, seriously, it is like, it's like telling my nose, like, who the fuck is Thomas Handy? We're new riff. We're here to party. Um, No, this is a straight bottle and bond. Not a single barrel, so this is, this was distilled in uh, fall of 2014, bottled in 2018. I do think that this is either the first release of uh, New Rip Bottled and Bond or the second or third. Holy shit. Holy shit. Folks, we have a taste off. While 
Old Forester, still buying you every day of the week. Love your value. I still think you're the best value in American whiskey. Uh, I'm going to put you over here because New Riff just came in and straight kicked that ass. Holy shit. We have a taste off. This is the 2018 bottling. And again, I'm just, this whole thing, this whole excursion, I'm just grabbing grabbing stuff off of my shelf. I'm looking at something that's interesting, and I'm trying to pit other things that are interesting against the other interesting thing. So this is, this is a no way, shape, or form uh, designed. I am just doing what I do. I sip whiskey. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do my very best to break down this new riff for you because all it's telling me to do is drink it. It's not telling me to describe it. It's not telling me to analyze it. It's saying, let's go outside and smoke a cigar and not think. And when I get a whiskey that makes me do that, when I get when I get a whiskey that turns off that kind of like analytical brain of mine, I know I'm in trouble. So that might be why I kind of hid this bottle behind like 15 other bottles because it is really, really, really good. Really good. Okay, so you just get a little spoon of, uh, you get a spoon of molasses, like nice, sweet molasses. Not sorghum molasses, but real Caribbean molasses. You spoon it up, you put it on a piece of uh, cornbread, and you you watch it melt down there, and you then you take a bite. You got the sweetness, and you got the grains. Now, this is a rye. This is not a bourbon. This is a rye, so it's a little unusual to perhaps taste cornbread in, in a rye. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'll just get, get that in there a little closer for you so you can see it. After that cornbread, after that cornbread note, you get you get the rye. You get you get some of those spices, but what stands out are, are the sweetness, the sweet notes. The sweet notes really stand out for me, and the sweet dominates. Like that molasses, there's some honey, there's like hints of grapefruit. And then underneath that are things like uh, herbs, like in particular dill or, you know, some kind of, um, you know, spice. You know, there is a cinnamon note there, but that's not what's dominating this. This is a modern, so this is a modern style uh, rye, whereas I would tell you that, you know, Thomas Handy's a little bit more old school. So this is essentially a battle, kind of like, uh, you know, the, the Handy versus uh, Peerless. This is, a, this is a battle between styles. Uh, and, yeah, here we go. Mm. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I've explained the, the, the flavors of this as much as I can. And um, I think it's time to admit that we're at a point where these two rise are equal. They're equal. This this new riff, bottled and bond, 
is equal in terms of how it's hitting my palette right now to this extraordinarily hard to get Thomas Handy. Now, you might ask, why wasn't New Riff in the running for my American Whiskey of the Year last year? When as a matter of fact, they were. The, the New Riff Balboa was in the running. I never really cared for that as much as I did like the previous releases, which was the Bottle and Bomb. And this would be, you know, that version. And this was also a 2018 release. So, um, hello, New Riff Bottle and Bond from 2018. Let's, let's, um, let's, let's give this a last whirl. I'm going to, I'm going to taste this one more time before we do the, um, before we do the countdown on, on the, uh, on the finish. Well, there are people outside my office now. If any of you all are watching this and are standing outside my office, I'm not saying that's weird, but that's weird. Okay. Yep. Uh, I gotta I gotta stick with the handy. Handy does defeat it defeats new riff because of the same reasons that I talked about with with Peerless. When when you start breaking down how something feels on your palate, you have to basically canvas the entire inside of your mouth. Like whiskey can touch every square inch of your mouth. It can and it will. The new riff, lovely on nose, amazing on taste, great on the finish, but when it came down to the points of contact inside my mouth, it was very limited in comparison to the handy. The handy basically encompasses the entire mouth to include inside my lips when you give it like that kind of like opportunity. And so that is kind of like a little bit inside to my assessments of how I when I have something that's very close and like how I choose. Now you will notice that I did not spit tonight and um, and a lot of times in competition you have to spit. Like this would be at the point where I would say I can't taste anymore. I need to spit. And you can still accurately assess things but you do lose just a hair just a hair of the assessment on the finish. And that, that I just explained to you, is an example of losing on the finish. So there you go. That will conclude my tasting for the night. Uh, looks like I have about three minutes for, uh, for questions. How about it? Um, looks like Peter had a good question. Peter? There are a lot of craft that are coming in strong now. It took some years, but it's happening. Yeah, that's right. I'm I'm very excited to see craft uh, with a strong swing right now, but this pandemic is a little scary for them. There's a lot of things there that we need to uh, we need to assess. Now, listen here, Alice in Wonderland or Whiskey Land. Uh, Thomas Handy is a licorice bribe you know what if you got the licorice tooth you got the licorice tooth you just got to know if you got it that's about it well i think that's going to wrap it up for us tonight i want to thank you all for joining me i know there's a lot of places you could be 
and I'm gonna continue doing these live streams tomorrow. I don't know if I am, it might be a recorded one, but I'm gonna continue pushing out content, giving you guys stuff to watch uh, while you're isolated or, you know, whenever. It's really important that we don't lose this element, that we do not lose this element that we're still a community. We still have things to say, we still have stuff to talk about, and we should be very thankful for the fact that we have these instruments that we can communicate at, at any given time. And I hope it stays that way. But if it doesn't, and all the social media stuff goes away, and all the YouTubes and everything else go away, you know what we'll have? We'll still have whiskey. We'll still have something that we can sit down and sip. And if things start going more crazy, well, you can trade it for toilet paper or whatever. <laughs> but my point is, is that whiskey is a constant in our society. Whiskey is a, it's something that we can all connect to unless you have a, a problem with it. And that's a different story, but it's something that we can all gather around, have a sip of responsibly and have a conversation. And that, at the end of the day, is what life is all about. So thank you for spending your time with me. Thank you for continuously coming back. It's bedtime. It is time to go to bed and rise up strong for tomorrow. As I close, please remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers. Man, I can't find the... Cheers.